to know that the church belongs to Jesus Christ and he is the only one who knows the criteria by which he can judge whether the church to be right or wrong. I mean, if you know that, because the church belongs to him and therefore he knows what is right, what is wrong. He knows what is the positive, what is the negative because we all have our own perceptions of how things need to be, but we are not the masters. We are not the makers of the church. We are not the establishers of the church, really. You know, he is the one and therefore he knows what he wants from his church and what he doesn't want. Yes? We're all on, uh, in agreement here, even though the, the society would tell us, okay, this is how you look at the church. You know, these are the positives, these are the negatives. But what does God say? What does Jesus say? Because he is the one who established the church and the church belongs to him. And we need to know how he grades, how, what he condemns, we need to condemn. What he commends, we need to put it into practice. So I call these churches or this sermon, Christ Certified Churches. Okay, that's good. Christ Certified Churches. Are we a church which is certified as to be good by God? You know, these are churches, there are churches here that are certified by God as good. We're going to look at chapter 2, verse 2. And all of these churches, these six churches, some of them have more positives. Some of them have, some of them have only negatives. But we're going to look at only the positives for today. Chapter 2, verse 2, the book of Revelation. I know your deeds, your hard work and your perseverance. I know that you cannot tolerate wicked people, that you have tested those who claim to be apostles but are not and have found them false. So what kind of an appreciation is this? You know, what is Jesus saying? He says, I know your deeds. Again, as I tell you, every church, every letter, Letter starts like this, where God will always say, I know your deeds, meaning that you might be able to blind, you might be able to deceive people, but you can, never can because I'm, no, I'm the all-knowing God. I know what I'm talking about. When I say this is right, I know what I'm talking about. When I say I'm, this is wrong, I know what I'm talking about. So he says, I know your deeds. And what are these deeds that he is talking about and he's happy about? Your hard work, your perseverance. And he goes on, I know that you cannot tolerate wicked people. How is that a positive? Huh? Can we go and hate wicked people? And God is going to be happy about that. When Jesus himself was called the friend of sinners. And he was always with. Huh? According to the Jewish understanding. The wicked people. The unrighteous people. The sinners. He was always with them. And are we supposed to hate these people? And God is going to be very happy and say. Oh you are against all these wicked people. What do you think? Okay, so here he is qualifying these wicked. It's not just the wicked. He is saying, who are these wicked people that are not being tolerated by this church in Ephesus? These are people who claim to be apostles, but are not, and they are false. We are supposed to be tolerating. We are supposed to be accommodating of people. But there is a group of people we are not supposed to tolerate at all. You know whom? Not the drunkards. Yeah, not the people who, are, who we think are very wicked and, you know, we brand them and say sinners. You know, when, when you read the gospel, sometimes you would find that the gospel writers would say that Jesus went, to, went on to eat with the sinners. There was a group of people who were already labeled and they were called the sinners. Okay, so the gospel writers would write it that way. The Jewish mind operates this way where they say, you know, Jesus went and he was eating with the sinners. Okay. This wicked people, this wicked group of people are people who claim to be apostles, but they are not. And this church is not tolerating that. And Jesus says, I commend that. It sounds a little bit radical, but this is what, as I told you, this church belongs to Jesus. What he says is good. We have to accept it as good. What he says is bad. We have to accept it as bad. Okay. Are we people who are able to test? You know, here it says they tested and they found that these people were not apostles. Who are these apostles? You know, when you look at the apostles, the word apostle, you know, we know who are these apostles. Not the self-styled apostles that we have everywhere today, right? Yeah, we call ourselves apostles, we call ourselves prophets, we call ourselves everything, okay? Who are these apostles, actually? An apostle is someone who's sent out by Jesus so that they could go and teach what Jesus taught. He sent them to teach what he taught. And the, as we know, even the great commission is this to the apostles. He says, go and make disciples and teaching them to observe what I have commanded you. Someone who takes the teachings of Jesus, goes to the people and tells them this is what Jesus taught. They are the 
apostles, okay? According to the Bible. And anyone who does not bring the teachings of Jesus, they might claim to be sent out by God, but they don't teach the teachings of Jesus, then they are not apostles. And the church is supposed to be intolerant of such teachings. If at all we hate something, this is what we should hate. That is what we find here. You know, we need to be against this false teaching. And Jesus is saying, this is what I commend in you. For, for us to, uh, no, we've been talking about this for quite a while. For us to even hate, for us to even test something, you need to be really familiar with the genuine thing so that immediately you are able to understand that something that has been passed on as a genuine thing is a fake. You know, have you seen cashiers? I've, I've, I've seen, you know, people, cashiers, they, they, they're really good at that, okay? Because they are so used to the genuine stuff that as they go through it, you know, one of my friends used to say, you know, he, he was uh, taking this uh, huge load of cash, you know, and depositing it, and uh, the cashier would just go on, and at one particular note that that cashier stopped, picked it out, okay, and looked at it, put it back in the stack, started counting, recounting, and again at that particular note, she took it out and then kept it aside and she said, this is fake. You know why? Because she knows the feel of how a genuine note would feel. You are so exposed, you, are, you have become the masters of something that immediately you are able to know, hey, this is fake. How many of you are able to identify a fake Christianity? How many of you are able to identify a teaching that comes in the guise of Christian teaching, that comes in the guise of teaching from the Bible, yet it is not, and you are able to say, stop, this is not biblical, I am not going to listen to it, in fact, I will not even tolerate it. And that is the church of Jesus Christ. How many of you know the teachings of Jesus? This is what my question is. You know, maybe I'm repeating myself again and again because this is the basis. Because today, what we get exposed to, we think that's the right thing. Someone tells you this is what beauty is and everybody has to really say, hey, this is beauty. You know, if someone says this is tasty, we all say, yeah, this is tasty. We have become sheep-minded. Do you know that? <laughs> yeah. We... It just blindly follow. You know, people ask me, hey, if millions are following this teaching, that means there should be something right in that. Just because millions do that doesn't make it the right thing. You understand that? What do you think? Yeah? Know your scriptures. Know the teachings of Jesus. Especially, I'm, I'm, I'm so focusing on this again and again. Read the teachings of Jesus again and again. Because, you know, you are bombarded with all of these things. You know, it is very, very, the songs that we sing, be careful that the songs that you sing, you know. What about the reckless uh, love of God, right? You know that one, right? Do you know that? Yeah, all that it needs is, you know, reckless love, really? Have you, have you looked up in your, in your dictionary what reckless means? It means impulsive. It means dangerous. It means not thought of before. Is God's love like that? I mean, this sounds a little bit, okay, yeah, what I'm saying is, look at the dictionary and you know, that's not, nothing biblical. Jesus already planned it, even before we were born, that he was going to come and die for us. That was not a spur of the moment decision at all. It was not an impulsive decision at all. You know that? So it was selfless, definitely, but it definitely was not reckless. You understand that? Do you say, hey, he's a reckless driver. That's off to him. <laughs> Do you? What I'm saying is, because millions are liking something, doesn't mean you have to. Look at the teachings of Jesus. That is how you will know. You know? I'm not asking all of you to become critics, okay? I'm not asking all of you, because sometimes that also could happen when you know a lot of things. You, 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 I mean, you, you can't help by being a critic. And sometimes you become cynical as well, okay? Sometimes that is a, that's something that comes along. So you strike a balance, right? You love people. At the same time, you know what is wrong. And you say, this I'm going to be intolerant with. Do you know what the teachings of Jesus are? If not, any teaching that comes your way, you will be captivated by. And Jesus would say, now, nah, I'm not happy with that. I am happy with the church that is intolerant to wrong teachings. You know, he says, don't tolerate, but denounce them. So I call it the acumen and aversion of this church, okay? 
Because you have that acumen, because you have the intelligence, because you know what is right, you are able to discern and say, hey, I'm not going to stand for this. I'm averse to this. May God help us that heretical teachings will never be a part of your theology. Heretical, I'm, I'm using this word and I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not using it lightly. These are heretical teachings which come in the guise of Christianity that you be very cautious to check it with Jesus. If someone comes and says on TV, yeah, you know, um, yeah, again, I have to name some names. What can I do? Okay. Hillsong NYC, Lakewood, Elevation. Look at all of the preaching that comes there. You look at that, you know, they go about saying that uh, Jesus never, you know, one person on TV, you know, they are asking the question, do you think salvation is only through Jesus? And this pastor says, and a lot of devout people, I'm no one to say that whether they will be saved or not. According to my understanding, I think that Jesus is the savior, but I don't know. Maybe that is a way. Who? Lakewood Church. Do you know that? How is that even the Bible? Then what, what is your gospel then? Do you have to preach the gospel if everybody is saved already? Do you have to preach the gospel? Yeah, everybody is saved already. They have their own way of understanding God. They are saved. What are you doing here then? What is the gospel? What, why are you sent out? What are you sent out for? Saying, you know what? We believe the same thing. Is that what you're sent out to say? Think. Just because it's become a phenomenon doesn't mean it is a part of the church of Jesus Christ. I, saw this. I see some of you frowning and being angry with me. So it's high time that I move on to the next one where I will make you angry again. A cumin and a version of this particular church, Ephesus. Look at chapter 2 verse 9. Jesus says to the church in Smyrna, I know your affliction and your poverty. Again, I know everything he says. I know your affliction and your poverty, yet you are rich. It's, it sounds humorous. God is saying, I know that you are poor, you are afflicted, but you know what? Don't worry. I think you are rich. He's not saying I'm giving you riches. He's not saying, hey, hey, hey I, I know you are poor and you know, let me fill you with riches. No, he says, to the world you are poor, but to me, you are rich. Okay. Yeah, that is not a consolation at all, is it? The world thinks of you as a failure. Don't worry. In my eyes, you are a star. Right? The world might think that you are overweight, but don't worry. You are still lean. <laughs> to myself, God is saying. Is that going to make it right? But as I told you, the perspective of God is what is the right perspective. They are afflicted. They are poor. Why are they afflicted? Why are they poor? As we know, because they are standing for Jesus. Because they are, they are standing for the right gospel. They are standing for the right teaching. You know, you would think that uh, Christians would be persecuted by, by non-Christians. But do you know that Christians get persecuted by majority Christians? By heretical Christians? Didn't you know that? Yes. Who are these guys who are creating all these problems? They were Jewish Christians. Did you know that? The church was already persecuted by the Roman people. And to add to that, you know what was the problem? The Jewish Christians, they came and gave a lot of problems to the church. Because they stood for the writing. Did you know that Paul was uh, uh, targeted? Everywhere Paul went, you know where, who was standing against him? Most often the Jews. The people of God. You know what? Everywhere riots started, you know who started them? The, right, the people of God, meaning, yeah, they call themselves the people of God, a people who have a wrong understanding of God, targeting the people with the right understanding of God, wherefore you, 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 you have affliction, you have poverty, and uh, you know, yeah, it is not God's will that you are poor. I definitely know that for sure. It's not God's will that you suffer. I mean, if you know that. Or oh, you're doubtful after my sermons. Hey, this is a tricky question. No matter what he says, this guy is going to be... You know. God wants us to be happy. God wants us to be healthy. God wants us to be wealthy. I have no idea. God wants you to be okay. But that's the ideal. But the world, the real world is this, that... Just because you are living the, a righteous life doesn't mean everybody else is living a righteous life. So, unrighteous people are going to make your life 
miserable and therefore you go through problems but you still go through the problems knowing that you go through those problems because of standing for the right things for the right teaching for the gospel for jesus christ i'm going through this it's not the ideal if the whole world changes then maybe everybody could be all right at till that point of time things are going to be bad but i don't have to worry about it they say because jesus says it's all good you're afflicted you are poor but i tell you it's all good hallelujah not that you need to you need to you need to be happy in your suffering you don't have to be happy in your suffering you need to pray you need to try to get out of that uh, suffering but at the same time but if you are suffering for the right reasons god is still happy with you some of you walked out no right <laughs> this is beautiful may god help us that we will accept what he he says and verse number 10 it's beautiful do not be afraid of what you are about to suffer he says you are already suffering what we would be expecting is don't worry your suffering is all gone i step in and everything is gone yes or no look at that do not be afraid of what you are about to suffer you are already going through suffering and jesus is saying to the church don't worry about this suffering yeah I'm, i'm it's all good but don't worry about the suffering which is going to come more and it's like oh <laughs> and what does he say i tell you the devil will put some of you in prison to test you and you will suffer persecution for 10 days be faithful even to the point of death so suffering doesn't stop with imprisonment suffering goes on to even death but it's all good okay be faithful and i will give you life as your victor's crown he is not saying i defeat the enemy you will be going to the point of death but then i'm going to do something and you know no you are gone but i give you life and you give you victor's crown what life right and you still a victor you are still a winner for the world you lost terribly for the law, for the world you know you were insignificant poor afflicted but for me you are rich you are the winner you want to say on that this is the church of jesus christ i'm saying if you have to suffer i mean you don't have to if you suffer let it be for the right reasons obviously don't get in don't don't give you know uh, don't court suffering obviously you know be very careful when you when you preach the gospel right don't go about uh, uh, antagonizing everybody be cautious be diligent be know how you need to preach the gospel you speak the truth but know how to do that okay don't don't get don't court persecution but at the same time if you are persecuted for jesus if you are persecuted because you hold on to the minority belief which is the right belief or the right belief which has become a minority belief and still the majority is against you don't worry because you still have what the victor's crown yeah no hallelujah no praise god nothing affliction and adversity i call it and not only this church the next church also to the church in pergamum verse 13 i know where you live he says where satan has his throne and uh, you remain true to my name again you are faithful to me this is what is very important you have been faithful even the previous church god said right he said be faithful and here he says you have been faithful you have remained true to my name you would not renounce your faith in me not in, not even in the days of antipas my faithful witness who was put in death in your city where satan lives it's almost like you know the whole world or the city that you live in it's not just the uh, you know satanic influence it's basically people who are really working against the true gospel and he says you continue to be faithful today we speak so much about faith what do we speak about faithfulness i have a strong faith you say do you have a strong faithfulness that no matter what happens i will still remain true to you as i told you faithfulness to jesus is much more important than yeah obviously your faith in jesus as god but more than that today when we say faith what's faith i believe god can i believe god is going to give me an audi i believe god is going to give me a palatial house 
I believe I can fly to the US. Okay. You know R. Kelly's song, I believe I can fly. Okay. Do you know that one? Okay. You don't know any song. This is what our faith is. We always have this faith. Oh, I'm so strong in faith. You know, nobody can shake me from this faith. What faith? That God can do? No, no, no. That he is God and therefore I'm willing to die for him. That faithfulness is what makes these churches Christ certified churches. Hallelujah. Yeah, and the church is not the Living Spring Church. It's not just the, this church. I'm talking about all of us being a part of the church. And therefore, if we are able to do that, we will definitely be commended. Acumen in the version I said, meaning knowing the right teachings and being averse to the wrong ones. Yes, we talked about affliction and adversity because of the right teaching that you follow, because of your faith and your belief in Jesus, because of your way of life, and you still follow because... You are faithful. And we're going to look at the uh, chapter 2 verse 19. I know your deeds, your love, your faith, your service and perseverance. We find that faith and perseverance have got to do with whatever we have already spoken about. But your love and your service, this is new in this church. God is commending them for the love and their service. Love towards whom? Not just to God, to people. Faith to God, perseverance because of God, but love and service to people, to one another. And this is a church which has been commended by Jesus, a Christ certified church. You know what? A church which is able to love people. A church which is able to take care of the needs of the people. A church which, can be, which is able to serve people. You know, this is our ministry. You know, this is very important for us to understand. If we, are a, if we think that uh, we don't have to do anything, you know what love is? Love is basically always that action where you do something good because you have their welfare in your heart and your mind, okay? So it's always action. And a church that is always serving people, loving people, helping people to, you know, not just, not just grow spiritually, yes, that is very important, but also in other ways. That is, that is what makes it a Christ-certified church. You know, Jesus came to... Serve. You know, he is the master, but he still came to serve. And he said, you have to serve. If the master served us, how much more should the servant do? Yes? Yes? If someone tells you, you know, God is going to bless you so much, everybody is going to serve you. I'm sorry. God is going to bless you so much that you're going to serve everybody. That maybe is the right statement. Okay? You know what? God is going to bless you. You're going to serve everybody. That... You don't get it? Yeah, that sounds very, yeah, bizarre. We are supposed to serve people, uplift them at the cost of ourselves. But today, we have moved on to a Christianity, to a teaching, to, a, to, to, to churches where people don't, uh, people don't get any importance at all. Relationships don't get any importance at all. You know, and, and we, still, we still call them churches. I'm sorry, Christ certified church is not like that. It is a church which is always people centered, which is always giving to people, supporting people, uplifting people, so that because we have their welfare at heart. Jesus did that. He was the most selfless person ever. And if at all we follow him, we become selfless in service. You know, so the ego should never come into the picture. Are we egoistic people? You know, if someone hurts you, go and mend it. You know, if someone is against you, you know, go and, uh, you know, this is difficult. But that is what Jesus did, yes? He called Judas, you know what? Huh? He called Judas a friend. He called Judas a friend. He didn't owe Judas anything. Did Jesus owe Judas anything? But he went about and called him friend. You know why? That's, that's, that, that is, you know, the, the hum, human thing always says, you know, you did it against me. You know, God will take care of that for you. But the church that is certified by Jesus will always say, you hum humiliate me. It's okay. I want to be humble. You humiliate me. I will be even more humble than you, you, you want me to. Let us be a service-oriented church. You know, just think about that. How much do you think about yourself? How much do you think about other people? Even in your income. Even in the blessing that you do already have. How much do you think about other people? Are we able to uplift people? If not, we are not a part of the church. So I call that affection and assistance. You know, the acumen and aversion. You know the right teachings of Jesus. You stand against the wrong teachings. That is a Christ certified church. Then we talk about the affliction, right? And uh, adversity. 
that they go through, that they went through because of holding on to the faith, because of them being faithful to Jesus. And that is a Christ certified church. And now we looked at this church, which is Tiatira. You know, we find that they were filled with affection and they wanted to assist one another. They wanted to help one another. They wanted to bring, build this beautiful kingdom of God where everybody is equal. This beautiful. And this is a Christ certified church. So, what have we learned for today? That the church belongs to Jesus. And he's the one who can always give us the criteria and tell us what's right, what is wrong. It's not the world. And what, according to him, know the right teachings, stand against the wrong teachings. Wonderful church. Affliction and adversity, because you hold on to the right teachings and because you are faithful, that's a church that is certified by him. And affection and assistance to people that you love people and you want to serve people that's a church that is certified by him. Let's bow down our heads and look to the Lord in prayer.